Hey kids, Mr. Morty here, and I'm here to teach you today about making a simple meme. Uh, so uh, you can pretty much use almost any program you want out there. I'm going to be using Photoshop because it's the most used, and uh, it's pretty uh, affordable for uh, even students for you out there to use. If you have a student email, you can get a pretty big discount from them. But there are a lot of free alternatives out there, and uh, a lot of them are basically clones of Photoshop. Uh, so a lot of the, well, mostly what you're going to be learning today is technique, okay? and how to use the tools. And these are basic tools, like I said, that are common amongst almost all image manipulation programs. Okay, so let's try it out. So we're gonna be doing two different kinds of uh, memes today. One is gonna be a really simple one that's just gonna be a picture with words on it. And then the other one, we're gonna complicate things just a little bit more. We're gonna have two pictures that we're gonna to bring together. We're gonna to have text above each one. And then we're gonna put in a talk bubble with, uh, with them saying something, the people in the picture saying something. All right, so it's not gonna be that complicated and again this these are memes they don't have to be perfect in fact sometimes they're funnier when they aren't perfect okay so really it's just trying to get a point across in it all right so uh we'll begin with the really simple one first so first we're going to go into photoshop here all right so this is photoshop when we first begin here uh when you first open it and you can see I've made a couple memes already myself, just in my free time is for fun or whatnot. And so, uh, yeah, we're gonna first go over to create new, okay? And from in create new, we're going to pick something out. So if this is gonna be for the web, they got certain sizes for that. Uh, and you know, we're gonna say um, we're gonna say that this is just for art and illustration. Um, and then over here for the width, we can change this to inches or pixels. If we have it on pixels, well, uh, you know, usually we can go by like 1080 by 1080 or something like that, which when we have the both numbers the same, it makes a perfect square, okay? Uh, but we can change these numbers as we see fit, whatever we want, okay? So we're gonna say that this is gonna be uh, 1080 by 1080 just a nice square okay and we're gonna change our resolution down to 72 because this is gonna be for the web we don't we're not gonna print this out we're just gonna put it up on you know whatever social media we want to use right so uh, once we set that up everything else is good our color mode is an RGB we're gonna hit create okay and now we've got our square that we can start creating our meme from okay now this might not be the le the size that we end with okay what we're gonna do is eventually crop it okay and the crop tool is gonna be this guy right up here okay kind of looks like a frame right there all right and that again these symbols are gonna be the same pretty much in a lot uh, you know in almost any other kind of photo manipulation program they're gonna be very similar these tools are good uh, even if the, the symbols are different the names are gonna be the same okay so uh, first, we're going to bring in our picture. So you, normally what you're going to do is probably go on to Google. So I'm going to bring up my Google here. Hold on one second here. So we go to Google and we type in something like ocean view, something like that. And when, then we want to make sure we come up here and click on images and the header up here. And now we can see all these images of oceans. Okay, so you can find one that you like. Uh, for this particular meme, I'm just trying to find just open ocean, right? So like something like this right here would be good open ocean. So I click on it to make it somewhat bigger, all right? And then you right click on it, and then you can, when you right click on it, you can come down to where it says save image as, and then you can click save image as and save it on your computer however you want to save it, okay? So I've already uh, gotten my images ready uh, and I've got them in a folder. Because remember, you, uh, if you've got things already prepped before you go into an image manipulation program, then it's going to make things a lot easier. Remember, taking time to design will give you the best art, really.
honestly. So, uh, you know, part of that design work is getting all of your material together so that way when you start putting it together, there's nothing holding you up from getting to the end product. Okay, so uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in our image. There's lots of different ways that we can bring in images into Photoshop. Uh, one way that we can do it is we can come up over here and click on folder right there uh, into Explorer and go right to where our folder is and we can drag and drop the image we want to bring in right into it. Okay. So I got my image here and I can simply just drag and drop it right in to Photoshop right there. That's how easy it really is. That's all I got to do. And now I can resize the image. Now notice up here, I've got uh, a cancel button and a check button. The check button means I'm done. I'm good with it. Otherwise, uh, the cancel button will just completely cancel it out altogether. And then I can bring the image in back in again if I want some other way. So I've got my image here. I'm going to bring, blow it up. Usually you don't want to do this. You usually don't want to blow up an image. Uh, the reason why is it's going to get really pixelated if you do. But you know what? We don't really care about that, right? Because, uh, hello, this is just a meme. I don't care, right? So we'll click on the check symbol here and boom. Now we've got the size. And it still looks pretty good for us, right? Like that looks pretty good. So the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to get rid of this extra white space down below. So we're going to use that crop tool that I was talking about. That's going to be this guy right here. Okay. When we get the crop tool, we get these edges right here. But sometimes we could actually just go in here and draw out what we want to crop out just like that. If we want to do it that way. Okay. We've got a handy dandy reset button here so we can go back to the way we had it before. And really what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this handle that's down here already for us. And just bring it right up just like that. Boom. Hit my check symbol. And boom. Now I've got a perfectly cropped picture. I've got it to the size that I want. Okay. Now, we could also just open up the image right here in Photoshop. Just like so. Open. Come in here. We go to the folder in which we have it in. And hit open. And boom. Now I've got it open this way, but the problem is, is that the size might be different or, or maybe it's just easier to start it out this way. Cause maybe you're still brainstorming. These are just multiple different ways of bringing in our image and getting it to the size that we want. And plus two, we also learned how to use that crop tool. Okay. Now the next thing we've got to do is bring in our text and, uh, to make our text visible, we're going to do some handy dandy tricks to it. So I'm going to come in here and click on our text and I've got all kinds of different texts here that I can use, but I want the key to a good meme. Okay. Is to make sure you have text that's legible and easy to read. Okay. So I'm going to pick out my text here. Let's see here. Remember something easy and easy to read. So you don't want any like frilly things. You don't want to be and like cursive or something you really want to pick out plain text if you can and thick text if possible too okay but sometimes your text can really play into a lot of what you're trying to say here so actually i'm going to go with something like uh this century school book right here uh i think that's what it's called so i'm going to click on that okay and now i'm going to just with the text tool activated, that's the one with the T right there. Okay, I'm going to bring my tool over here and I'm going to just drag it out onto my my surface here. And look it, they already put in some tests, uh, some, some made up words in there for you. Uh, so that way you've got something to work with right off the bat. You don't have just a blank empty box there. You actually can start sizing your text. And if you come up here, you can see it up in your control bar up here. You can reduce the size just by clicking and holding on the T right there. See how our cursor changes. We can actually now bring that size down. So that way we can have our sample text is about the size that we want to work with. 
Okay, and also we've got color right here. I'm gonna make this uh, black text. Or actually, I'm gonna make it white text. Okay, but I'm gonna put a black stroke around it. A stroke means an outline around the text. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, click our checkbox for now. Okay, and it is just a bunch of made up words right now. But if I come over here to my layers panel, that's over here. Okay, now our layers panel works like sheets of paper stacked on top of each other. All right, our backgrounds layer is going to be towards the bottom, whereas our text layer that's right here is going to be at the top. All right, and we can rearrange these if we want to by clicking and holding. See how our, our cursor changes into a fist? And we can actually rearrange where these layers go so we can rearrange where they're, how they're stacked. Okay, so I've got this text layer up on top. Now if I double click in an empty layer right here, I can actually bring up my layer styles panel. Okay, and with this layer styles panel, I can click on stroke. Okay. And if I click on it and turn it on and actually click on the tab for it, I can go in here and change the things like the size here, okay, where it's positioned, if it's in the center of the edge of the text or the outside of the edge of the text or the inside of the edge of the text. So I'm going to put it to the outside so that way I really get the most out of my letters, get the most white coming out of them. Okay, and I've got my size down to two points. I could make it down to one if I want, but we'll go ahead and kind of make them a little thick. Kind of makes it a little bit more cartoony, if you will. Okay, and now I'll click OK, and now I can finally come in here. I'll double click on my text. I still have my text layer selected. Okay, and while I have it in here, I can hit Control A, or if you're on a Mac, Command A to select all the text. See how it's all highlighted now? Now I'm going to type in what I want to say. Uh, we are not afraid to use some lowbrow humor in memes, are we? And uh, we'll go ahead and kind of size that up so that way Submariner and farting are on the same line. We'll hit our check symbol up here. Wait, actually, before we hit our check sign, let's go ahead and also just clean up the size of our text box. So that way, we don't have a bunch of empty space on our text box, making it so if we click on it later on, click in that empty space or try to move something around, we don't accidentally select our text box instead. All right, now we'll click on our check symbol up here. And we'll click on our move tool, which is at the very top of our toolbar up here. And with our move tool now, we can actually position this. If you see those magenta lines that come up, those are smart guides, letting us know when we get into the center of an object. And it's also using some pretty smart AI to look at the picture and let us know when we get to certain areas. And as you can see, it's putting it right on the top of that water. And if we want, we can actually bring this all the way down to the water if we want, or we again can just have it sitting right on top of the water like that. So that way our main subject matter for after people are reading is just the water right there. And boom, we've got ourselves a meme right there. We'll go up and we're gonna go next go up to file, save as. We're gonna go and say that we wanna save it on our computer. And now we'll go and save it We'll select the folder that we want to save it to. Remember, it's just as easy to save it on your desktop. But remember, you don't want to save too many things to your desktop, okay? You do want to find a folder to put it in to save it inside of, okay? So I've got a special folder all ready for this here. All right, and then I'll name it. And I'm going to call this Submariner Meme. And then I will select for save as type, select my drop down menu here, and I'm going to select JPEG because that's 
probably the most well used, best uh, uh, image format for us to use uh, to put up on the internet. Okay, but we could also use a PNG if you want uh, as well. A lot of uh, social medias uh, will also accept PNG uh, if you want to use that instead. Uh, then we'll hit our save button after we've named it and we've verified what type of file we want and hit save. Uh, we'll make sure that we put our image options up to large and hit OK. And boom, now we've got our first meme done. Now we'll go on to our next meme that we're going to we're going to start up. And this one we're going to bring two images. So we're going to double the size of our canvas. All right. So All right. So this next photo uh or this next meme uh is kind of going to be a Father's Day themed meme. Okay? Uh so uh I was thinking uh well, let's take two characters in pop culture. Let's say uh Captain America and we got Darth Vader right and the memes gonna basically go on the top uh, when you call your dad uh, your hero and then it shows Captain America going hey I could do this all day long and then uh, then when you call your dad dude and then it's Darth Vader going no I am your father kind of a funny meme right perfect Father's Day kind of something every dad kind of jokes about maybe uh, this might be a kind of a fun meme to do you can of course change it up this is just an example you can make your meme anything you want it to be uh, this is just an example for you to try out if you want um, you don't even have to make yours the biggest thing is just to learn the techniques that I'm about to show you for it okay so for this next one we're gonna go up to file and we're gonna do new and then from here, we're going to double click in here. And this time we're going to actually name our thing before we put it out. So this is what we're going to call dad or here father's day meme. There we go. And now we're going to double our size for our height because we want this to be top and bottom. Okay. So we're going to make this go. We're going to double the size here. So 1080 times 2 is going to give us 2160. Okay, so we'll do that. 2160. Okay, and we're going to hit create. And again, we're going to keep our resolution at 72 and our color mode at RGB. If you do want to print this out for dad, for a Father's Day card or something like that, then you can change this to the resolution to 300. But your images still will come out very grainy because you're gonna have to really blow that image up okay and then you can also change your color mode to cmyk so that way when you, way when you go to print it it will uh print in the correct colors as well uh another thing that you're gonna probably want to do is uh turn up the brightness on your image and i'll show that later on in the video uh, in case you want to do that because prints will always print darker than what you see on your computer screen okay so we got it in RGB we'll hit create here and now we've got our long narrow uh, meme thing here to go with all right so again I'm gonna st going to drag and drop it in from the folder that we have and I've got one here I've got Captain America so I'll bring him in perfect and we're going to allow for just a little bit of white a white space above the image. So that way we can have some text right up there. And then we'll have our uh, comic bubble we'll put in right there. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and bring in our Darth Vader next. Oh, wait. We got to hit that check symbol up there. Don't want to forget that. If for some reason things aren't working, uh, it might be because... Um, it might be because you still need to hit that check symbol up there. Okay, so we're going to hit the check symbol. Okay. Now it's hit. Now I can actually do stuff again in Photoshop. Photoshop will stop you from going any further if you haven't hit that check symbol up there. Okay, and that's the same for almost any kind of tool that you're using in Photoshop that uses the check symbol up there. All right. So we're going to go again. I'm going to go back into my folder here and then bring out the Darth Vader. 
Okay. I bring Darth Vader in. He's a little bit smaller, so I'm going to have to blow him up. That's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring him down here into the corner here. And then I'm going to pull him up this way. There we go. And I'm going to pull him up right about right there. So what I'm doing right now is I'm actually cropping my image using my canvas use, instead of using my crop tool. Remember, there's lots of different ways to uh, do different things in Photoshop. Okay. So again, these are all learning experiences that you're getting here. So we're going to come up here. We've changed our size. We got it to the way we want. We, uh, we've got a little room for text here. All right. And I can actually bring my image up a little bit if I want, and I can always crop out the extra white later on, but I'm going to keep it the way it is for right now, just in case I need that extra space for text. We'll see how it goes, right? All right. So next thing that we'll do is we got our, uh, we got our two images in here now, and then what we'll do is we'll come in and we'll put in our text for what we want to say in our different spaces here. So we'll bring out our text tool. We're going to keep our uh, font the same because I like that font for a meme. I think it's good meme font, I guess you'll say. But again, you can use whatever font that you want. All right. Uh, whatever's installed on your computer, really. And then I'm going to drag out my text box just like so here okay I gotta change my text frame size uh, as you can see it's all highlighted in black right now I'm not actually seeing any text that's telling me okay that's indicating to me that my text is too big so I'm gonna go ahead and bring down that size by changing my font size by clicking and holding on here I can also use the drop down menu to change my size my font size but I want to make sure I get it to a good size that I want to use. Okay. Also, why it's all dark is because, well, I'm using white on white background. So I want to make sure that I change my font color as well back to a black. So now, as you can see now, I can actually see my text. Okay. And, uh, and I've done this all before I've actually typed anything out. That's what's great about the newest, the latest version of Photoshop is that it actually puts out some sample text so you can actually uh, get your text down before I actually type anything out on it. So I'm going to get this to a good size that I think will work. All right. And now I can just start typing. It's already highlighted. So uh, before I hit that check symbol, I can actually just start typing if I want. So I'm going to put in here when I or when you call dad your hero, period. Really simple. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, highlight all of my text so I can resize it. Okay, you got to do that. If you want to resize all of the text again, you have to make sure that it's all highlighted so it knows what text you want to get, what text you want to be resized because you could have other text in here that you don't want resized you could make it so uh, you could have hero right here just highlighted and change the size of that so it's nice and big so that way it's emphasizing hero so I could have it that size okay but if I want to change it all at one time I do have to select a size all at once all the same and then resize it okay now what I could do is Take it to this size, then take the word hero and make it bigger, like so. Okay. And then what I could also do is instead of being in lowercase, turn on my cap locks and type in hero in uppercase, like that. And then hit my check symbol. All right, now I want to move my text so that way it fits in here just right. So I'm going to take my move tool and bring it down so it fits in there just right, just like so. And now I'll go back over to my text tool and type out what I want to type next down here. I'm going to make it to the size of my text box here, and then I'm going to make my sizes bigger again, okay? And then I'm going to type in when, oops, make sure I turn off that cap box. When you call dad dude. And again, all caps, like that, okay? And then what I'm going to do is highlight this text. 
And what I can do is I can make it the same as this one. What I did was I just came up here and double clicked on the text, automatically switched me to my text tool, and it tells me it's at uh, 91 for the size. Okay, so then I can come back down here, make sure that this text here is at 91 as well. I can just come in here and type it in and then hit my tab key. It gets it to the right size. And then for this one for hero, this is at 136. So for dude here, 136, hit tab. Now it's as big as the dude that's up there. I'm gonna also make my period the same size as my other text that's just above it. Hit tab, okay, and boom. And then I'll hit my uh, my check symbol up there at the top and boom now I'll use my move tool to make sure I get this right in the right spot I want it looks like it's about the same size or same height as this up here but then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my Darth Vader layer over in my layers panel and I'm gonna move Darth later Darth Vader up just a little bit more just like that now Darth Vader's in here just right with just enough space around my text for each part right there. I can now use my crop tool to come in here and crop this right at the bottom. Notice what my crop tool do, is doing too. It's giving extra space. It's showing you in areas that are dimmed out what is still there. Remember, Photoshop is non-destructive, meaning that it's not actually destroying anything. You can bring these things back. That's why we have things like layers. Okay, so now we'll go like this. We've got it to the size we want. We hit our check symbol to complete the action, and there we go. Now we're gonna bring in our talk bubbles. And we could draw in our talk bubbles, okay? Or we could just go on the internet and find some talk bubbles if we want to do it that way as well. But I'm gonna show you actually how to quickly draw your own talk bubbles right in uh, Photoshop right here, okay? Uh, to do this next part, we're gonna use the pen tool, okay? Now the pen tool is gonna be down here. It looks like a tip of a fountain pen, okay? And we're gonna click our pen tool and what we're gonna do is up here in the control panel, which is gonna be up here at the top, okay? We're going to select shape instead of path, okay? This is gonna make it so it's gonna create a shape for us that we can make whatever shape we want with whatever color we want on the inside. And then the outline, which again, we call a stroke, is gonna have, we can choose whatever color we want for that stroke around the outside. Okay, there's a lot of cool things that you can use with this pen tool. Okay, so not only making talk bubbles is something that you can do with it, but there's a million other kinds of cool stuff. You can make characters with the with this pen tool. You can make all kinds of cool artwork. You're not just, uh, you know, it's not just to what we're doing here. Okay, remember, you can always break the rules when it comes to art. So we're going to come up here to our fill color. Fill means what's going to be the inside color. All right, so we're gonna change that. We're actually gonna keep that at white because we wanna make it white background with black text on the inside, just like what we've got up above here, okay? So then we're gonna come up here to stroke next and we want our stroke, our outline to be black, okay? So we have it like that, all right? And now we'll come in here, we'll keep our pixel size for our stroke, we'll bring that up to two. Space, and then tab over to complete that action, okay? And then we're gonna come in here. Now, if I wanna zoom in on my uh, my canvas here so I can get a closer look, so that way I can make a better talk bubble, okay? So I'm gonna hold down my Z key, and as you can see, when I hold down my Z key, my cursor becomes a magnifying glass with a plus sign in it so I can actually come in here and just click in the area I want to zoom okay now if I want to zoom out all I have to do is hold down the Z key and then also the alt key and that will give me a minus sign in there and I can zoom out now okay so now I'll come in here and I'll actually start making my talk bubble 
So I'm going to make a circle. Okay, so first I'm going to make it so I get the V shape coming in here. So I'll click in one spot and I've got one point. I'll click another and it's made a line for me. Okay, now I got to make the bubble part. Okay, so I'm going to come over here to where I want the top of my bubble to be and go like this, but then I'm going to pull while I'm still holding down my left mouse button. Okay, I'm going to pull it out until I make it kind of the, as round as I want it to be right about there. Okay, now I'm going to go to is where I want my top how for as how wide I want my talk bubble to be so I'm gonna go right about here and boom look at that Photoshop so smart that it automatically rounded it out for me on the other end right here look at that I almost have I have half a talk bubble now so now I'm gonna go down to where I want it to go down the furthest to the lowest point I want it to go okay so I'm gonna say right about there right in the middle and I want it to be about in the same area is the top one that I made right there so that way it makes a nice round bubble for me so I'm gonna go right about to here like so and for this one I do have to I do have to go and make it round so I'm gonna kind of while well, again I'm still holding down my left mouse button I'm gonna kind of round it out here just like so boom just like that now I'm going to go to where I want my talk bubble to end. So I want it to be kind of like this because I want a triangle here. So I am going to click in the white space here. Okay, don't be afraid to do that because watch what's going to happen now. I'm going to come right here so I'm right below my, uh, my point right above just like so. I'm going to have it right about to there. I'm going to click and hold. Okay, and as you can see, it already made it round for me, so I can let go. Now I've got a talk bubble right there. Now I can come, and if I go and I hold my cursor right on my first point that I created, you can see my cursor now has a circle in the corner of it. Okay, in the bottom right corner of it. All right, circle usually indicates initial in a lot of different formulas and things like that. In this case, this is telling us we're back at our beginning now, okay, completing our shape. So I can click this and boom, now I've got a completed shape, okay. And now I can come in here, take my text tool, grab that out, okay, and pull that guy out. Oh, look at that. I click in it <coughs> and it automatically changes my puts a text box right on my shape right there ready for me to type in there how cool is that okay normally you could just draw in where your text box box is but again photoshop this is why photoshop is the best because they make these automatic responses happen when you use your tools so now i can just come in here and resize this to get it to the the size that i want to include enough text in there and then i'm going to say no, come on. I am, am your father. Okay, I can come up here and kind of re hit some enter a couple times so I can get this in here just the way I want it. just like so of course there's a lot of other ways you can get that text to fit in there just right but this right here is you know just using your enter button for return and adding space and putting returns at certain spots works just fine remember th this is just a simple meme creation we're not gonna get too detailed in here but I will bring my size up just a little bit to add, to add the readability right there and so there you go it says no I am your father and then we'll come up here. Doo, 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 doo. Now, one faster way that we can move around when we're zoomed in is we can also, while we don't have our text tool selected on anything, sometimes it's best to select your move tool if you want to start moving around. We can hold down our space bar, okay, and we get the hand tool, and now we can click and hold on our mouse, left mouse button and drag around our canvas. 
And then as soon as we let go of the space key, we then um, go back to the tool that we had before. Okay. Now, what I can do instead of remaking this again is I can use my move tool, okay, to take my, uh, to select my shape here. And if I hold down my alt key, let me zoom out. Remember to zoom out, we hold down the Z key and then the alt key, okay? It gives our cursor the magnifying lens with the negative sign. I can zoom out, okay? And then I can hold down my space bar to go back, okay? I got my move tool now. And what I can do is I can come over here to my layers panel, make sure I click on my text layer that I've created that says, no, I'm your father and then hold down shift and select the shape layer that's underneath it, which is gonna be our talk, talk bubble. Now, if I hold down the alt key on my keyboard, okay, notice my cursor gets that double arrow to it. I can now click and hold my left mouse button and look at that, it makes an exact copy of both layers and I can bring this over to here. I can also, with the move tool, if I have up in my control panel, if I have the show transform controls selected, I can now uh, come over here and I've got my uh, handles here for transform my transform handles and I can actually resize this down to a smaller size just like so. Hit my check button to finish out that size so that way it's a little bit smaller and then I can double click in here, first select my, my text layer my new text layer right here and double click on it to get it highlighted. Okay, and then I can type in here, I can do this all day. All right, just like what Captain America said in one of those movies. Okay, I get it kind of into the area I want. Even still, again, I can use the move tool to move it down just like so, okay. You can use your cursor buttons, the arrow keys, next to your number pad on your keyboard. You can also, with your move tool, use those to get it into just the right spot. Our selection tool just to get rid of the uh, move tool box there. And we're gonna use our zoom key, to hold down the Z key and the alt key to zoom out. And boom, look at that. We have a finished meme. Again, we'll go up to file, save as, okay. Save on our computer. And then we're gonna call that, we'll keep it the name Father's Day Meme. And then we'll click on save as type and we'll save it as a JPEG. Even if you're gonna go to print it, saving it as a JPEG is still okay. But uh, again, if you wanna print it, you can go into uh, Photoshop, uh, no, sorry. Um, you can change it to Photoshop PDF. And that's really great for printing. But if it's just going to be going on the internet, then you can just hit save, just like so. Hit OK. Boom. And now you've got yourself a meme. Uh, now, if you are going to go print it, remember earlier I was saying uh, if you needed to change the brightness, okay, what you would do then is called a, an adjustment layer. Okay, or what you could do is group all of your layers together. You're gonna click your top layer and then all the layer just above your background layer right there, just like so. And then you'll click folder button in your layer panel here and it's gonna make it go all into one group. Now you could go up and do this next thing that we're gonna do. Otherwise, and I'm gonna hit control or if you're on a Mac, command Z to undo, okay? If you've got Photoshop or a, you have a, an image manipulation program like Photoshop that has adjustment layers, you're going to click on this adjustment layer right here, and then you can actually pick on brightness and contrast right here, okay? And that's going to actually make a layer where you can actually change your brightness and contrast for the entire image. And all you want to do is make it just a little bit brighter. Even if it seems too bright to you on your screen, it's going to be a lot darker when it prints. Okay. So usually I like to set my brightness up to 20, 
20 above what I was working with on my computer okay otherwise if you do it the way I mentioned before where you group everything together you're gonna go up here to image adjustments and then you're going to select brightness and contrast and you'll get this box right up here where you can change it making this change though will be permanent okay uh, in most cases so a better thing to do if you have that ability is to use your brightness and contrast adjustment layer okay that's going to conclude our video now uh, i hope you learned quite a bit from this uh remember at any point you can stop it and rewind it and you can replay this video as often as you want so that way you can really learn these techniques uh if you have any questions uh, as to any of the tools that I used here or any questions sp specific to an image manipulation program or how to create more memes. Uh, again, you could uh, go to Google or YouTube and make sure using your the right keywords, you can find the question, the answers to any question that you have out there. If you do have a specific question for me, you can email youthacademy at cod.edu and put in the attention field question for Mr. Morty and they'll get that question right over to me. I'll respond to you using that same email um, that the youth academy at cod.edu to get back to you with the answer to your question and I'll try to answer that question as best I can for you. Okay. Uh, I miss you guys a lot as I'm sure you guys miss me in our classes uh, but uh, soon all of this will be over and we'll be able to have classes together. Okay, always use loving kindness in everything that you do, and the results will always be great. Take it easy, boys and girls.